Hi, this is Father Paul from the Sunday Mass, and I want to thank you for tuning in today to the Sunday Mass on our YouTube channel. I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for free and become part of our Sunday Mass community of faith. Now let us begin our celebration. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass and Ministry of the Passionist Community. It is April 11th, the second Sunday of Easter, more commonly known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Our presider today is Father Enzo, and this is a very special day for Father Enzo because 25 years ago on this Sunday of Easter, he was ordained a priest. So we want to offer him congratulations, and we want to thank him for sharing his special day with us today. So if you have your prayer guide, take it out, turn to page 61, the beginning of Mass, and let us begin our celebration. At the Lamb's high feast we sing, Praise to our victorious King, who has washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side. Praise we him whose life divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common with great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. 
and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins are you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have, say, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, 
his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through his disbelief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Father Paul mentioned at the beginning, today is a special day for me, and um, I'm happy to celebrate this special day of my 21st anniversary of ordination as a priest uh, with uh, you as a virtual and digital parish. Um, it is truly an honor. And if they would have told me 25 years ago that I was going to celebrate broadcasting this Mass, I would have not believed it. And if they even would have told me that 25 years ago, I would have celebrated this anniversary during pandemic even less. But here we are. And I really am so thankful to the Lord for this gift, and not because I deserve it, but because through this gift, he even shows even more his mercy. One of the things that struck me of this gospel and struck me that day when I was ordained, and even through the words of the bishop who was consecrating me, is that Jesus comes when we are full of fear. The doors are closed, they're locked, they're sealed by fear that is provoked by sin. And Jesus comes instead and he just opens these doors. He opens the doors of our heart. And the first word he says is, peace be with you. And the Holy Spirit is given to the apostles to forgive. The Holy Spirit is given to bestow peace and joy. The day during my first Mass, the homilist insisted on one thing, that a priest is mainly someone who brings joy. It's always been my prerogative to bring joy. And this happens especially when you meet and understand God's mercy. Now, to experience God's mercy, it is really not, it is something singular. And each one of us has its own experience. It's so interesting how in the gospel, the 12 apostles, except one who wasn't there, Thomas, they have, they're full of fear, and Jesus appears to them. They're full of joy to seeing Jesus. And then when Thomas comes back, they tell him, we have seen the Lord, and they tell everything about him. But Thomas doesn't believe. And Thomas in the, in the gospel is called Didymus, the twin. And he's kind of like our twin. We're very much alike him. Sometimes it's not enough that we just hear from others things about God, things about Jesus. We can go easily on books. We can go read the catechism. We can hear what people say about him. They're their own experience. But there's a time when you make your own experience. And I would say, if I wouldn't have my personal experience, I wouldn't be here as a priest, just like Thomas. And this personal experience is so strong that when you recognize who God is, you won't just simply say, oh, you are really God. You're the creator. You're the redeemer. Thomas' expression is so intimate, and he says, my Lord and my God. He becomes mine. This is how intimate God becomes. And when it truly becomes yours, almost like when you can say to a person who you deeply love, my friend, my dear, my love, that is when 
really, your heart is opened and you really have the experience of God. And when you have that experience, then you're able really to preach it. One of the things that is said to the priest when he's ordained, when he's handed over the pattern with the bread and the chalice full of wine, it is said to him, understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of Lord's cross. Now to do all this, it's not just enough to celebrate Mass. Mass is the, probably the highest point. It's the beginning and the culmination of Christian life and also of priest life. But there's something more. Because as a priest, you're called not just to touch the body, of the, bread, the, body of, of the bread of Christ and even his wine and consecrate the wine and the bread and make it become body and blood through the, through the gift of the Holy Spirit and share it with your brothers and sisters. But you're called to do more. You're called to really touch with your hands the wounds of the body of Christ today. And to do that, it means to become vulnerable like Christ. Christ appears to the disciples with his wounds. They're glorious. They've been sanctified. His wounds become light or expression of God's love and mercy. And the beautiful thing is that he's never tired to show himself and to be touched. In fact, at the beginning of the gospel, it said that the same day he rose from the dead, he appeared to the disciples. Eight days after means the next Sunday, he appears again. It's like every Sunday, Christ, he feels to be touched by each one of us every Sunday so that we can experience like Thomas's love and really say, my God and my Lord. But as I said, it's not just enough in the Eucharist. The Eucharist has to become life. You have to imitate what you celebrate and really live the mystery of the cross of the Lord. In order to do that, you have to be able to recognize this cross in those who suffer today, in those who are wounded, to see the vulnerability of those around you, and then you discover your own vulnerability. And when you discover your own vulnerability, you discover really more God's mercy upon you. And I tell you that after 25 years, although it was told to me that day when I was ordained, understand what you do, Every day that passes by, every time I celebrate, it seems like you understand always something more. It's a relationship that grows. And when this relationship grows, you realize how you still have so much to learn. And if you wouldn't be in contact with the wounds of Christ in his body today, to those who suffer, to those who are poor, to those who are sick, you really cannot understand what you're truly celebrating. And I give thanks also, especially during my ministry, I want to give thanks to the Passionist community for giving me the opportunity to really touch in a special way Christ's wounds in, the body, in his body of the church and those who suffer today. And I also want to give special thanks to the Passionist community for having me have that beautiful experience in Haiti, a country that is still profoundly wounded and that really marked me. And probably that is the place where I truly put my fingers in the nail marks and in his side. Because that's when I learned that you're not so much you evangelizing them, but it's the poor who evangelize you. And you discover God's mercy even more. And I also want to give thanks today, particularly to my family, for giving me the gift of life, to accompany him during my vocation, and to all the friends that I've had and for all the people that I've known who are praying for me. So please pray for me today that we may continue to experience God's mercy in our life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, come substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and with confidence place our needs and petitions in his merciful hands. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that in the light, the breath, and the spirit of this Easter celebration, we will not be unbelieving, but believe with a genuine faith, a joyful hope, and a lasting love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of life, from its first moment of conception to its last breath, and every moment in between that it will be honored and respected as God's gift. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our Sunday Mass faith community that will be placed next to the altar, and for Anna Gambino and John and Angelina Lombardo, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God of divine mercy, hear our prayers and find those in our hearts through risen Christ our Lord. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none e'er spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, Yet in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord, my God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good of all the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of our, your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts to sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth. 
earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held else worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be couriers to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Please offer each other at home a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Grant us, O Lord, peace in our days, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in our country, peace among nations. Make our lives a prayer of peace for the world. Help us to forgive and to seek forgiveness. Help us rid ourselves of pride. Grant us, O Lord, peace in our days, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in our country, peace among nations. Make our lives a prayer of Make our lives a prayer of peace for the world. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of the Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And thanks to all of you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. A special thanks to Father Enzo, for leading us in prayer, but also sharing his special day with us. Thanks to Michael and to Preston and to Wendell and to Renal for helping us to pray today. Have a great week, everyone. And until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise. Sing to God a hymn of gladness, sing to God a hymn of praise. He who on the cross as Savior for the world's salvation bled. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, now is risen from the dead. Now the iron bars are broken, Christ from death to life is born. Glorious life and life immortal on